Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. You know, I have carved a lot of crazy things in my life. I've carved some really cool things as well. And I've carved some things that are really, let's just put it this way, emotionally connected to the customer as much as they are to me. In today's episode, we are going to be carving a memorial owl, which means it's not a memorial for an owl, but for a person who loved owls. My name is Jeff Moore. I'm the Northwoods Carver. Thanks for seeing what I saw. Well, if you want to start at the beginning, you better start from the start of the beginning. So I almost remembered to film this. Almost, but not quite. I, I was like probably I don't know. I was I don't know how deep I was into this carving before I remembered. Oh yeah, I gotta probably I should probably film this. So anyways, um, I just I'm just getting the wings shaped in. I got the I got the owl you know the owl head kind of place where I want it. I'm kind of fidgeting around with where the legs might be, and also figuring out how I want these wings to come off and what angle. And so we're just that's what we're doing here. We're just fidgeting around. And I'm marking things up a little bit so I can maybe have a little reference for later. And trying to get things flat. So right now we just basically stuck everything to the, you know, the big trunk. Um, and, you know, flattening it would come later. We're just trying to mock it up. I wasn't sure what I was after, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I never did one like this before, so I'm just, you know playing around a little bit and getting you know certain parts done that I absolutely had to get done before I brought it into the shop before I could actually start do doing any kind of detail with the battery saws so later on you'll see how all that went but uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find some find some like a pathway and seeing if I even like what I'm doing you know since I've never done one before and I only had like three images that would work for me for some reason <laughs> on the whole internet I only found three that were gonna work for what I wanted to do and of course watching the you know owls and flight and all that that helps but I really need to see what I need to see specifically and there's not a bunch of images and then when you do find some something cool, I learned this, uh, all these owls, all these like great horned owls, they, they don't all look the same. Depends, I guess, on the region they come from, right? So, you know, I kept looking at them like, oh, I really like that, but is this the same kind of bird? And yeah, it was, it just had a different color and everything just kind of threw me off. And I, I didn't want to, I know, you know, genetics and symmetry and all that was probably the you know, it was probably all pretty close, but uh, for me, I don't know. I like to use that. I like to pull things from the ether, if you know what I'm saying, when I do these. I don't really necessarily, you know, rely on pictures as all that much. But uh, here is a place. This is the little port hole, whatever you want to call it, the uh, where the ashes for the... Of the memorial we're gonna go in so that will be soon following and you'll be able to see how I did that moving right along here I couldn't wait to get my or this piece into the shop and literally just you know get this thing out of my head just start making lines and you know doing everything I could to just further it so I could find my way that much easier every step you take whether it's a wrong one or a right one I don't know it's like a video game you know where you're uh, you make the choice and then it has all these options and <laughs> then you gotta live or die by those decisions uh, and art is it's like that sort of except for it's not life or death obviously um, it's happy or not happy happy no happy make up your mind so I try to be happy as I can so in this regard, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty happy guy. Um, but here I am. I cut off the legs. I did not like them, so I went and found a substitute piece that I would flatten out and add where the legs are going to go on. It's all wrong. It's totally wrong, but it's all right. It's all right. 
Where did I go? Where am I? Well, that's interesting. Huh. There's a piece of me that just disappeared. Maybe I just turned sideways and you couldn't see me. <laughs> so anyway, um, just thinning out the, the feathers. At this point, um, I already made the decision to add the feathers um, individually. So this is just this is just me spitballing here, doing a little spitballing. Um, and as you can see, there's a big ugly crack. That's an inclusion, I believe, or could have been a um, you know it's just a rotten crack that. I don't know, it's, I believe it was an inclusion because there was a bunch of sap and stuff in there, so. Now it's time for Old Guy Wisdom. So, I had to stop for just a minute. Um, I've been running battery sauce for a long time now. Um, I don't know, it's probably since they came out, obviously. Uh, so, here's the deal. The battery saws, the 220s, the 200s, and 160s, um, they they have this one particular issue, and you have to be aware of this when you buy one of these, and you're going to carve with it a lot. Um, what happens is, <clears throat> you'll notice that the batteries are getting warm, and when you go to put them in the charger, they'll flash red instead. They won't charge because the battery's too hot, the saw got too hot. And you're thinking, what did I do that was different? That would create that issue. Well, uh, I will show you. Um, there's four screws on the top of the orange case that look like that, okay? Or just, where's the camera lens here? I don't like that, these little guys. You know, they're, they're nothing screws. Actually, they're pretty heavy duty for being in plastic. <laughs> So uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a look to see after I pulled those four screws out, I already pulled them out before I thought about taking this video, so I wasn't about to put them in, just take them, take them back out again. You so have the, where the cover, you know, where the battery slides in, and you have these two, tong these two little sections in here that you depress to get everything. Let's see if I'm in there. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so I'm gonna put this in front and you can see a bunch of stuff down in there. But now that is a dead giveaway because there's always stuff in there. That means it's coming out of somewhere inside here because it, that much material, I mean, I dumped a lot of it. It doesn't normally sit in there. So now watch this, guys. You pull that cover off, that whole thing is filled with sawdust. Feel me? I mean, look at that. That is, that is not good. So you got to take time once in a while uh, to pull this all apart. Because what happens is the sawdust goes in there, and I can feel the heat coming off of this, the motor and all that. And what it is is uh, it builds up so much heat, you'll fry the motor and the electronics and your battery's gonna give you warning signals. Your battery's gonna give you warning signals. Like, hey, it's too hot. Too hot in the hot tub. So you gotta make it cooler. So let me uh, blow this thing out, and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. One of the things you'll run into for a problem is you'll notice your uh, absence of, uh, your power will start doing weird things. Um, your what do you call that? Your trigger response is gonna get weird. It's gonna, it's gonna get weird. So, and then you'll be like, what is going on with this thing? Then you take it into your dealer and they'll go, man, this whole thing's filled up with sawdust and you fried your your components inside that make it go broom. To make it go. And uh, so that's that one. Um, I think it has a lot to do with I don't know, it just kind of accumulates everywhere. It just, just got to keep your saws clean, everyone. I struggle when I'm in the heat of battle. You know, I'm guilty, but I also... So bottom line, guys and gals, definitely 
clean your saws, pull them apart every once in a while. Um, you know, the, like I said, the 160s, the 200s, and the 220s seem to do it more so than like the 140 and the 120, but you still should do those anyway. It's, it's real quick and easy to pop those off. Anyway, so we're back to the job. And as you notice, I did not show where where I was going to like blow it all out and show you what it looks like. Well, um, I just forgot. To be honest with you, I just I just forgot. No big deal. I've got other things on my mind, and and uh, you know sometimes when you're editing videos, you you just skip over some stuff. You know, it's crucial, vital stuff that you know was important, but didn't seem like it um, as you were blowing through. Uh, so. Here we are. I am just now getting some of the leg, the leg, and uh, I guess what do you call it? The thigh ruffle, ruffle, thigh feathers, belly feathers. I'm not sure if I like this foot, but uh, or the feet. So I'm. Did I cut these off yet? Oh, by the way, um, I cut them off. If I hadn't done it yet, I think these are the good ones, though. Did I cut them off? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> this is my video, and I'm editing it. I'm supposed to be paying attention here. Yeah, those are the those are the replacement legs. Um, so here I am, just fitting the individual feathers, just getting the the proper, you know, as far as I can tell, the proper uh, size. Um, like I said, there's nothing perfect about this piece, and I'm just trying to get the basic idea of what I had in my head to start with and that is to have like this owl coming in for a landing suspended um, in a not so obvious way from the back you know so where it just looks like it's you know floating and I don't know I thought this would be a pretty clever way to do it you know especially with the feathers coming down uh, in the back to show oh there I go so I'm I'm fixing to make some time here folks Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I'm getting it out into the light, and uh, you know I got it to a certain point. I'm like, I really got to keep this thing moving. So I decided to just whack out the base, you know, and really dig out underneath the bird um, with my gouge. That is my own gouge of my own design and making. And uh, I've been playing with it now. We've been in uh, messing around with it for a couple years, and. Uh, so far so good we're we're uh we haven't had any issues with it and i'm just really proud of it and we're just uh we're just gonna keep testing it and playing around with it uh don't know if it'll ever see the light of day but uh it sure is a wonderful tool i'll go into that later but uh so i just decided to test my gouge again on this piece and it was able to do some really cool stuff uh, as you can see, I'm just working my way down. You can see Ray in the background. Uh, he's, if you've seen any of my other videos, he's a pretty sneaky guy. <laughs> so I got him on, I got him on camera. Anyway, uh, so I think we're about to uh, wrap up the texturing aspect. And I'm gonna do some texturing on the back as well, just to open up the V. So I have some place for those feathers. You know, I wanted to taper that down a bit where the owl connects to the stump and then the feathers would actually cover up most of that so it would totally look suspended with the shadow underneath to even accent it even more so I'm just making it look sort of like a a busted up old stump and here we are with the chisels just cleaning things up uh, as you can see the crack had opened up a little bit even um, from prior fixing it prior and you can see I've got more riffles going like I said it's not it's not brain surgery I'm not trying to uh, split the atom here I'm, I'm trying to basically make riffles that make sense with the rest of the piece so everything you do on a piece like this just has to match the other stuff on the piece um, like I said if you make one thing perfect perfect on a piece then it's a play you're playing catch up you're trying to make everything work out that way and I think you should try but uh, perfection is what's a good what's a good word or a good saying yeah we strive for perfection and settle for excellence 
and that is what we're doing here. Um, but then again, there's many, I mean, define excellence <laughs> in comparison to last year or the year before that. I don't know. But we're just tinkering around here. I'm, you know, the feet aren't accurate either. Um, I'm just making them look bird like if I can. Um, like I said, there is there is a time constraint somewhat on this, and I and I was going to spend more time on feathering and stuff if, had I gone the other route with the wings. But I'm spending a lot of time with the feathers, cutting each one, putting them all in there, you know, groove, making them groove, and then you know figuring out how I'm going to lay them all in there in such such a way where it's going to make it look like you know decent and. Uh, here I am just drawing in the feathers, doing some more of that, you know, along the, you know, just trying to get them to somewhat match. Like I said, they don't have to be, you know, spot on. They just have to match somewhat the other side because it's, like I said, I'm after the overall uh, perspective. I think it's a, I think it's the best way to go if you're a chainsaw carver. You know, a lot of guys, they don't look at any kind of material. Uh, they just go out of their heads and sometimes it's cool and sometimes it just doesn't pay off because you don't have enough knowledge that's you know that's me what can i say okay here's what i know so far i did a memorial a bear memorial for it wasn't for a bear, it was for her father. He loved bears. So she bought one of my bears and um, in memory, in his memory. And I put, uh, I suggested putting ashes in the base of the bear, his ashes. Um, and now it's out underneath. They have like a nice deck area, it's a beautiful house. And they can sit there and hang out. And then uh, her mom was a big owl person. And uh, so, she wanted to do the same for her mom. And this is her mom, or her mom's spirit animal, I guess is what you want to call it. Anyway, down below at the base, there underneath, it'll be, I'm sure you'll see the video, in the video, where I cut a big hole in the bottom, and then we take the, um, I'll go get it. So you take a board like this, this isn't necessarily the, the ashes or anything, but um, so basically you take the board and you basically uh, countersink it into the bottom of the, the log and then this thing will sit in there and be flush with the bottom of the log and will contain the uh, ashes or whatever in there. So, um, and then this is all gets you know, sealed up with foam and stuff inside and, and that's where they are, they are and if you ever need to take them out for whatever reason. Um, you can you can do so, but uh, that's how I do it. Let's keep on trucking, keep on trucking. Oh yeah, keep on trucking. So yeah, I've, I think this is the yeah we're doing the board like I just discussed um, about how we're gonna put that board and you know keep that tin on the inside. So I just basically recess the cut and then here I am putting the pegs on. So that's going to keep everything up off the ground and um, you know keeps the moisture away from the actual carving and then we put like a moisture barrier of, of like three coats of uh, exterior latex and uh, that's what's underneath. We did that before we did any of this other stuff I think just because we didn't want to tip the thing back over after it was all done up and feathers were all in place we just wanted to just boom. So here we are you know feathering around uh, doing feathers just tickles me so here's what I know so far everyone as you can see in this video there's a lot of stuff going on little individual um, feathers being sanded and slid into one another so that they lock themselves into place uh, I did have a little thing where part of this little spot here broke out, so I'm gonna have to clean that up inside the groove, as well as clean the glue off of it there. And uh, I think um, it'll be just fine. I, it, it happened to me once before. Um, well, this is only the second time I've tried it, so. It did happen to me once before on the uh, 
Patriot wall. A little section of it broke and I was like, it's so thin, you know. But thankfully, um, the new products that we have on the market are very strong and strong enough to do what I'm going to do with it for sure. Speaking of strong products, look at that guy in the steel shirt. Oh yeah. So we're working on the back. Uh, I believe I'm just putting in some detail or lack thereof into the back of the feathers. Um, I know I'm try. I might be being a little bit hard on myself, but you know what? I don't allow anybody else to be, so I got to do it myself. Um, so there you have it. Um, going up and down the back, just giving it a little something, something, so that I, when I do my dry brush technique, it has, you know, the, you know, the highlight has somewhere to go. So you gotta, you gotta put something in there, uh, some sort of, you know, detail. Correct or incorrect? Just try not to be as incorrect as I was on this one. But uh, uh, here we are. Oh, yeah, that's right. I when I did those top feathers, I added those two little tip things. And when I did it, I just made a gout or like a not a gouge, uh, like a uh, a slice into there. And so once I glued them in, I had to fix the sl the rest of the slice that wasn't being taken up. Today is Saturday, and I have been uh, doing other things up until this point, and now I'm going to continue with the owl carving. I will bet you've been looking forward to that. I know it's not super accurate, don't care. Accurate. So, a uh, little hint for you, if you ever do one thing accurately, one, the rest of it has to be accurate. Okay, so let's just get right down to it. You can do one thing accurately uh, in your life, and that's cool. Um, but like, if you're going to do one thing accurately on a carving, you should probably try to follow suit everywhere else. Um, just in my, from my experience, um, if you do like a really great this or that, and the rest of it just doesn't work out, you can look at it and say, "Well, I did that right," and uh, yeah. So um, the rest of it will lack. So I just try to spread the whatever. Here's what I know so around. far, everyone. Thanks for watching at this point. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And smash that like button. What's the name of that thing? Notification bell. Okay, folks, I'm really sorry of that I interrupted me during the video. Anyways, so I'm putting the be the right hand, right well the right wing side in, and uh, uh, I don't know if you could see it, but prior to this, I had my finger and I kind of like did the Vanna White with my finger down the down the, the left side of the, and there's numbers on there and they're all correlating, you know, with one, two, three, four, all the way down, except for on this side, it didn't work out that way, so I had to start switching them around a little bit. And I was getting a little confused because it said like one, two, three, seven, six, fifteen. So it's like I count in my head <laughs> normally, but uh, it worked out. I mean, we were able to swap a few things out because as I was sanding them to fit, they were not fitting. So I actually made it worse. So I just had to get get flexible, and uh, I'm not a flexible guy. So it was fun, and we we ended up. Um, tying in the bottom of the I should say the tail feathers needed to come in in front of the bottom of the wing feathers they are so the the bottom of the wing feathers were actually locked in place on those those tail feathers so there's torque on them and it just kind of held everything else that was above them in place same with the tail feathers and then once we were all done we marked them again just like you know I thought we were supposed to and then we when we glued them in it became a whole nother thing so there you have it <laughs> it is cool in the shop this morning um, so I'm just warming it up uh, so one of the curses of knowing the steps to doing something like this is you have to you, you, you should probably do those steps. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Sometimes you just want to cut corners and go, ah, I'll just blow it off, this will be okay. I know from experience, if you're going to spend this much time doing something, just do the steps. It's even, even if you don't do them well, I shouldn't say that. So even if you don't think you're all that great, uh, you still need to do the steps. Even if you, like I say, if you're just starting out or you want to get uh, to that next level, take your time, do the steps. I mean, to me, this thing, look, it's really taken me forever to do this, but I have really great customers and this is the second thing they got from me. Um, it's not a big, humongous dollar piece, but it's still substantial enough where I'm going to try to do my best um, in that space between um, where your effort and a dollar amount are between there. You know, I want to surpass it, uh, but I don't want to go crazy because I can go crazy and I, I'd rather not. Um, so I think from a carver's perspective, the... Uh, where the value, or where, I should say, yeah, where the value comes in for the customer, from a customer standpoint, is how well you nail the form and how well you finish the form. Because the better you nail the form, the more accurate the details can be, and then that, that can run into some time, where if you don't do a super accurate form, like this is not a super accurate form, so I'm not all that concerned about being accurate with anything else. It's just gonna be an overall. It's still cool, right? So I'm happy with it. So back at it. So today, look at this. This is like actual. I mean, I did this incidentally or accidentally or however you want to call it. Incidentally, it looks like fine art. Isn't that crazy? Like you could cut. Kind of dirty now, but it looks like fine art. You'd see them museum or something and uh, hopefully you saw that Well, everyone, it's the uh, end of the road for this project. I am going to paint today, and uh, it's a little chilly in here. I don't know why. Fans aren't circulating. I had to turn everything off so you can hear me speak. Otherwise, it sounds like all this crazy sound. Anyways, uh, so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna dry brush the Owl Memorial back there. I'll bet you wanna see that when it's done. And uh, uh, I think it's going to pop big time. Uh, oh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment, man. I totally dig comments. I like, and I get back to every single person that leaves a comment, personally. There is not a bot. I am no bot. Ready to start? So I'll just start this, give you a, a little indication of what it's going to take. I'll close in a little bit here. And I will begin. With the Rattle Can. Finally my heater kicked off. All right, so I'm just gonna give this a quick rattle here and there. Kind of chilly in here, so. We are in Wisconsin in the wintertime, y'all. All right. Oh, this weekend, I have my bestest friend, uh, Bill Kenzior, coming over for the weekend. I think that's really cool. I'll probably be seeing my sidekick Ray Murphy. He's 
threatening to come back and carve a little bit with me. So, you know, it's always good to have people around, other carvers, keep the shop buzzing, keep that synergy humming. Plus, I can make them do this, so I don't have to. Oh, by the way, I just want to thank my wife. She set me up with all my stuff. Like, I got to do some stuff in the house. And I got emails and I got to make appointments and whatever else. So, she takes it upon herself. She come up here. Like sets my table up, gets all my paints ready, gets my brushes all cleaned up and ready to rock. Cleans my space up a bit so that when I come up, I can make stupid videos without the without the uh, need or she knows I'm a scatterbrain bubblehead, so she gets. She gets things all, uh, all organized for me. She's seen me do it a couple thousand times, so she knows what's what. I'm just trying to get this good and mixed because it's a little chilly. All right. Now. Oh, yeah. Next up after this, I'm switching gears. I'm going to finish up a couple of little, little bitty carvings, uh, little bear carvings that we started when Andrew Mallon was here from Virginia. Maybe you've heard of him, maybe you haven't. Probably have heard of him about 50 times on the video. Anyways, uh, yeah, I got to finish those. I think it'd be kind of a cool video to just kind of throw some music in there and some explosions. Does that have to do with carving? Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's an enjoyable process. This whole this whole dry brushing scenario. Please let this sprayer work. Oh good. You know, there's nothing worse in life than to grab it. Uh, like a pretty full can of paint, you just shake it for 15 minutes and you find out that the thing doesn't even spray. There's many a hole in the wall where I threw that can. Nah. That's my wife. What's going on over here? That's my wife. It's like a counterbalancing technique. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm overdoing it. Anyways. All right. Sorry, I'm so awkward. Anymore. I think I'm ready. I just check it by how loosely that ball rolls around. Huh? What's that? Uh huh? Huh? Oh. Hang on a second. I got another ball. Yeah. Oh, hi, honey. Yeah, we could use some red. Some like, you know, like fire engine red. No, not for this one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right, love you. Bye bye. Oh. Yeah. That was just my one. All right. That looks a little suspect. All right. This won't hurt a bit. I'm not good at this. I'm not very good at precautionary measures. Sorry. All right. I knew, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, is he gonna say turn your head and cough? Well, no, I'm not gonna say turn your head and cough. <clears throat> I'm not gonna say it. 
if you if you don't mind. <coughs> All right, folks, this is where it begins. All right. So we put a little on here. Uh, where's my brush? There it is. And we just kind of smear that around like so, and it's just going to absorb into the. You see that? Thanks for hanging out with me today. I was so lonely. Smear it in. This is not the best. This is like an old paintbrush, so I can feel little goblets, goblet nodules, nodules. A goblet is something you drink from. I'm just gonna kind of. I should probably put my glasses on. Oh, hey everyone. So basically you're just gonna go counter the direction of the feathers. So some of these you can go up and down sideways, it's not gonna matter, but I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but if you come see me at the Carver's Cambium Workshop, I'll teach you this year project in its entirety, not project, but technique. And uh, there's some other tricks. I just won't put on this video. This is just the basics. Just the basics. So, uh, yeah. Well, anything can be as basic as you want it to be or as difficult as you want it to be. And uh, I like things to start out basic, but then end up looking not so basic <laughs> that's just my motto so anyway i'm just uh lightly going over the extremities um so you can see as your brush is kind of flying over you're just kind of lightly touching the surface you're not you're not really pushing no push just a little flick or a little flickety do you know you don't want to give it any kind of pressure downward because then you'll push the little paint bristle br bristles into the you know the dark spots and you don't necessarily want to do that um, very much maybe in some spots but as you can see what I'm doing here is it's leaving the dark patina underneath um, and uh, here we are on the back side doing the same thing on the back side uh, yeah I did have two cameras for this. This is pretty cool. So I had my one on my tripod, and I just had one standing up on a pizza box or something <laughs> on my paint rig, uh, my paint cart. You can see that's the angle. Yeah, that's the, uh, the Italian angle there, the pizza box angle. So anyway, um, we're going round and round and round, and it's, you know, once you get that basic, you know, light tone down, then it's time to go for the you know the browns and the caramels and the whites and the you know whatever other color mother nature can throw at you that you have to try to get out of a rattle can um, it's 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 a challenge because you can go so many different directions and um, like I say if you don't have a perfect form and you don't have perfect uh, um, you know the detail then guess what the paint doesn't have to be either so I'm an expert at mucking up um, and having fun and just letting the whole thing kind of be what it is and I'm not gonna get in its way and I'm not gonna try extra hard anywhere in particular on this because it's all gotta be good you know it's but uh, that's where I think I have gotten into trouble over the years I just paint myself in the corner so to speak I would just totally be like yeah I'm just no I can't let it go out the door like this and normally that's the, I still do that but uh, to some extent but you know but then you think man I did all those feathers and I did all this and yeah I can't just let that slide I'm gonna have to put a little more effort into this and before you know it um, you might have done a little overkill on it but so what you know I just want it to look cool and and customer or no customer if I'm gonna do something like this uh, I'm, it's only gonna end up being sold to somebody and I just want it to be super cool so like when it goes out of my shop I can people is gonna see it and they're gonna go you know I've seen that before or that style or um, they, they know the work because it's it's unique to me 
and just like everybody else's work is unique to them and uh, you know hopefully one day we can all achieve success um, because of that because of the effort or lack thereof in certain circuit in certain situations yeah Okay, so maybe not success, maybe notoriety. Maybe you get notoriety from being either or. Somebody who gives it their all, or someone who just goes, eh, whatever. And they just kind of make stuff. Either way, as long as you're making stuff and it's art, man, is that cool. You know, do it well, do it great, or don't do it very well. You know, everybody has to go somewhere, um, everybody has to start somewhere, and everyone has to kind of follow their I guess their core desire when it comes to what they want to see in whatever they're doing whether it be art or whether it be you know I mean art is in painting or drawing or uh, could pertain to writing sonnets music uh, you name it uh, there's all different kinds of art and you know you get what you put out of or you get in get out of it that's right you get out of it what you put into it and uh, so I'm just right here I'm just thinking okay I just want to put some some of these little tiny flecks in the, in the in the in the wings just to give it that more realistic touch so so we're not looking at a couple of snow white wings even though I've seen pictures of them where they dang near are that was something that I was not expecting all the different colorations of these these birds I mean some of them looked literally like a stump like flying through the air and others looked like you know almost pure white it was crazy um, just in like that tan I don't know if that's a male female or a youth I'm not real sure how that all works I didn't have time to study the way I normally would. Oh, there's my my best friend, Bill Canziora. Hey, Bill. Thanks for helping out, buddy. So anyways, we're getting through the paint job. I'm trying to discuss little fine, finer points of what I'm doing. Here, look at my rattle can. Here's a box. I think I had him working on the base, staying in the base, or uh, painting the base. And I think he went awry. Something Something uh, went left when it should have gone right, or vice versa, and we ended up having to redo it. But he gave it an <laughs> he gave it a the old college try. Anyway, so I'm putting I believe the the beak. Oh, wait, that's coming. That's coming. It's coming. Yeah. So he's he's helped me clean the little brushes and stuff because I I have several. It seems like hundreds of brushes and. I don't know how many of them are still good <laughs> so every time I grab one I have them you know make sure it's clean and um, make sure it's pliable so I'm not bumping into the eyeball with a stick so basically I think we're at that point now where is it time to do the eyes yet man oh, Bill seems to be interested oh yeah there's a good shot of the back and just trying to richen up all of the um, you know the parts of the bird that are going to be eye level uh, which is pretty much all of it but I just wanted to make it richer and I'll tell you what I went out to use my phone and I I don't have any cell service in my in my shop so I had to go outside and I'm like you know what this is driving me nuts I got there's got to be and I should have never done that I'm looking at all these other pictures of owls and and I'm looking at all the colorations and I'm thinking I'm just gonna pick one <laughs> Maybe blend it with another one, and uh, yeah, interesting. There I was using a rattle can as a cell phone again. Hmm. Truly talented person. Unlimited potential. This guy does not need batteries to play. All right, so I think this is where Bill starts to do the paint job, and we're trying to draw this thing near to the uh, end of the cliff so we could push it off, if you know what I mean. And not in a bad way, in a good way, to be done, to be finished, uh, to work that, uh, work that lighting, work that paint, you know, trying to show Bill a few things, and hopefully I'm not uh, tainting his mind with my rhetoric. 
So anyway, um, we have... I don't know how much more time. It doesn't look like... Looks like we're pretty much there, honestly. I believe. Oh, here comes the eyes. Ooh. Here comes the eyes. So I had to go in it with white. And then orange. And then put the black parts in. Um, and I believe... Oh, there I am on the phone. Must, it was a busy day. Hey, I'm a busy guy. I think I left my cell phone in the other room, so I just used the can. Anyways, uh, yeah, just doing a little bit of touch-up here. Looks like we're going to be going into overtime with uh, Rattle Can. Um, you know, in the areas that you mess up, like if you, if you push too hard and you smear paint where you don't want it, you know, you can just grab your your black again spray over top and then just do it right the second time um, or the third or in my case probably fourth or fifth because that's the other thing folks if you use a gouge or a chainsaw or whatever you have to make convincing um, gouges into the wood if you're gonna do this in other words you can't skimp on pressure when you're gouging I mean you can't go too fine because if you go too fine then it's the paint won't even react like there's a dent there and the highlight will go right in there with the shadow and you don't want that you want to have a nice depth just enough where you can you know take a take your paintbrush and just kind of glide over it very softly and still leave something on the tips or on the the, uh, the edges of the detail does that sound right huh? yeah, that sounds right okay I recognize these pictures I'm putting in a little dot, a little white eye, a little, you know, a little sparkle, a little, little something in the eyeball there to uh, make it look more lifelike. Like I said, it's not perfect, and neither is anything else on this piece. But when you look at the piece in its entirety, it looks pretty dang cool, and that's that's what I was after. Getting that little little dot in there. I usually put two, and. Uh, as you can see, all my little paint flecks and stuff. I'm my handy assistant, uh, Bill, turning the turning the sculpture for me. Admire the outlet and admire the switch. Yes, and the yellow cord. It's so professional. You know, this is what we do. We make beautiful sculptures and show off our. I guess our wiring in our barn. Oh well, uh, so here we go. This is where you can see where the feathers went in and you can see some of that detail <laughs> that I put in with the paintbrush um, that I didn't mess around with with the saw. And we're giving the illusion that we actually, well, we did do quite a bit of work with the saw, but the paint, were, the paint we used and how we did it gives it an extra boost in detail. Okay. And we're back. So this is what I know so far. It's a wrap for the owl, uh, the owl project, my memorial project. So uh, I'm going to uh, probably uh, I got to find a place where I can sign my name uh, somewhere out of the way. If you do carvings, make sure when you go to sign your name that you don't make it huge in like in the front, just like put it small in the back. Doesn't need to be, you know, it's not about us, right? That is, uh, this is the wrap, this is the end. I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, sign it and inform the customer that this is a done deal. So, you know, thanks for hanging around this long. Don't forget to like and subscribe everyone. And don't forget to smash the uh, notification bell. That way you, be notified when I do something interesting or just do anything really. Uh, oh, Bill, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm uh, sleeping. That's what I thought. Good Lord. That oh, boy, Bill. Were you there the whole time? Yes. I was going to follow by me. Wow.
Um, I'm gonna get this up here. Well, thanks, Bill. I can always count on you, buddy. Hey, yes, yep. All right, so everyone, that's Bill Canzior back there, uh, AKA Best Pal. Right, Bill. Best friend. Oh yeah, best friend. Best friend. <laughs> All right, Bill. All right, everyone, that's a wrap, and uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.